Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's take a look at uh, the mountain weather and see what lies ahead. Here are my headlines. The big California trough is really dictating the future of the West right now. Um, it's elongated, the trajectory is slow, um, contains a very low or weak amount of um, atmospheric river intensity, um, and obviously it's not going to produce a whole lot of snow through the Sierra. Certainly not what we were thinking you know, three, four, five, six days ago. But what it will do is eject energy in, and I'll show it to you on the water vapor into the west. And as these pulses of energy come in, there are some cold fronts that'll be coming out of the Pacific Northwest, and the two will actually catch each other in mesh. And that's how we're gonna generate snow in two waves across the Intermountain West. So uh, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, that's how we're gonna get snow in a lot of those places. Utah, first shot 11-16, and then a, a second storm or cold front 11-18, 11-19. In Colorado, 11-16, and then late on the 18th, 19th, into the early on the 20th, we're gonna generate snow. So two different waves. Now on the 20th, it's possible, or 19 and 20, we gen we start to see a low spin up over Eastern Colorado. Don't know where that's going to happen at this point, but if it does, that could produce a little heavier snow for the Continental Divide of Colorado. So a lot of things up in the air, but that's the way it's shaking out right now. Let me show this uh, pattern to you on water vapor. Um, so the king right now is this big low or trough. There's another big low up here and another one, look at that one coming and doing the Gulf of Alaska. So, let me mark this, let me get the lime out. So what's gonna happen is you'll get these waves of moisture that are gonna move in, ejected. Uh, everything's spinning around this low. And as it does, it picks up moisture and throws it in to the Intermountain West. At the same time, coming up over the top, you've got these lows, and they're gonna send cold fronts down. Both of these lows will send a cold front down. And as it does, each front will probably catch some of this moisture and the two will mesh. That's how we're going to see two different waves of moisture. Let me show this to you on our forecast radar and satellite. That's the current state of affairs. Here we are by tomorrow morning, by tomorrow afternoon. And then here's the first example. By 11.16 in the morning, so you've got some um, energy being ejected from that trough, meeting up with a cold front coming in from the north. So you can see some of the generation there on the 16th and the Wasatch of snow, also up in the Tetons and in parts of Colorado as time wears on. There we are by the afternoon, and then that's done. So that one's pretty weak, but it does generate a few inches at least, maybe several in some places. Here comes the second batch. Watch it, here comes in and it starts the two. The two features mesh, so the energy coming out of the Pacific Northwest and the energy coming out of California mesh. This one definitely has a little bit more to it, and you can see it. There's more uh, precip generation here uh, for Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wasatch, Southern Utah, and most of Colorado. So this is really the one to watch, the second one. First one does its part, creases the skids, and then the second one comes in. And this would continue into the 20th, and like I was saying, we may have a low that spins up over eastern Colorado. All right, let's go back, and I want to show you how this looks on the jet. So this is um, 11:19, very late in the day, but with this pattern, this kind of amplification, all the energy drops down through Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, west north or north northwest type of pattern, very amplified. Um, and then the, the second jet here, this is the forecast for 11:23 late in the day. There's another storm system. You can almost see it with that dip in the jet crossing through Montana, Idaho, Banff, and Wyoming. And that one would likely drop down through Colorado. Um, so we've got two different um, fronts to uh, think about between now and the 20th, and then potentially one more on top of that around 1123. Here are my totals. So first period, very light. This is mainly falling on the 16th in the Wasatch and in Colorado. Now, I, I'll say that number I've got for Alta at four I thought about maybe pushing it up to six, um, possible. We'll see, but that's the way it looks right now. Uh, so four to six. Um, second period was much more impressive with that second wave coming through on 11, 18, 19, and 20. That's where we get the foot for the Wasatch, um, one to two feet for the Tetons. Now, some of that up in the Tetons and Big Sky in Montana actually comes with that next wave on, on the 23rd. So 
Um, there, there's a combination of a couple storms there, but in Colorado, uh, anywhere from probably four to 12 inches will do it for most, unless that low spins up closer to the front range and we end up getting more snow. Um, pretty good swath of snow for BC, some nice snow up around Revelstoke, uh, Marmot Basin, and some good stuff up around Baker, Stevens Pass, and Rainier. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here on this update. Always appreciate it. Take care.